Certified pre-owned cars, are they worth it? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter. This is a very common question from car buyers on my channel. So today, I'm going to take the time to break it down for you. If this is your first time here, you might consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have a specific question you'd like a direct answer on, you can either tag me in the comment section down below or send me an email to info at thehomeworkguy.com. As you can see, I make new videos that address questions from people who comment here on the channel. All right, some background on the Certified Pre-Owned Car Program, known as CPO. First, only franchise dealerships sell CPO cars, and only the cars they're franchised for. So, as an example, a Toyota dealer sells a Toyota CPO, a Honda dealer sells a Honda CPO, a Chevy dealer sells a Chevy CPO. You get the idea. A quick disclaimer. Just because a dealership is franchised does not mean they're immediately superior or more honest than other dealers. I've helped clients at a franchise dealer who turned out to be a complete slime ball to the extent that we had to involve the state attorney general's office in the car deal. The finance guy ends up getting fired. So don't give more credit than is due here. Let me tell you what a CPO vehicle actually is. It's a newer model, low mileage vehicle, usually less than 40,000 miles. In fact, sometimes a lot less than that. They are often lease returns or very clean trades and typically have similar equipment to many of the latest new car models on the dealer's lot. It's safe to say you're getting a car that's arguably better than other used cars based on selection odds. Every dealer and brand of vehicle has its own CPO program, including different eligibility rules for the vehicles it offers in terms of age and mileage, but as in buying any car, you get to choose what you want as long as they have a CPO that meets your needs. All franchise dealers put their CPO cars through a comprehensive inspection, which means on the low end, Technicians are going through at least a 100-point inspection on the vehicle. Audi claims it inspects as many as 300 points, so there are differences. Any problems discovered are repaired. Many CPO programs also provide third-party reports like Carfax to back up the history of the vehicle, but take Carfax with a grain of salt. Sorry to say, but Carfax isn't the car bible. CPO vehicles come with two types of factory warranties. Number one, what's called a limited powertrain warranty, covers the engine, transmission, and other expensive major mechanical components. And number two, a limited bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty which covers most other issues like air conditioning and other computerized systems in the car. What are the details and for how long? Some dealers will say six months, 7,500 miles. Others will say limited powertrain warranty for multiple years with 12 months, 12,000 miles on the bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage. It varies, so don't make any assumptions. Also, while CPO warranties extend factory coverage, and this is an important distinction because they are backed up by manufacturer warranties for the most part, they are often not item for item identical to the original factory warranty. Starting point also varies. Some CPO warranties use the original purchase date, others only kick in when the factory warranty ends. Every brand's CPO program differs in the details, so count on asking a lot of questions and reading all that fine print. Now here's a few added benefits. Depending on the brand, a CPO might also include free roadside assistance, complimentary scheduled maintenance, and possibly satellite radio. Buick, Chevy, and GMC also allow you to exchange the CPO vehicle you've exchanged for another one if for any reason you find that you don't want to keep it, but it has to be done within 72 hours or 150 miles of taking the original delivery. Not all CPO programs permit an exchange, so if that concerns you, make sure you ask before you go driving off the lot. Does a CPO save you money? Well, if you are thinking about a brand new car, the CPO route is a lot cheaper and you're getting a solid vehicle. You're avoiding that huge depreciation factor that new car owners hit within year one. Let the people with lots of disposable income take that hit. The CPO car is arguably nicer than a typical used car has lots of life left in it, it's unlikely to leave you stranded on the side of the road, and it's backed by a factory warranty. The best CPOs are ranked every year, and here are manufacturers who captured the top eight spots. Lexus, overall best in the luxury car market. Kia, best known for powertrain coverage, that's always been their strong point. Ford, best known for additional component coverage. Hyundai, best for extending original manufacturer's warranty, and they got a good one to begin with. BMW, best for vehicles with 15,000 miles or less. Chevy and GMC, best for exchange flexibility. I mentioned that earlier. Nissan, best for electric vehicles. And Subaru, best for a CPO with no deductibles. 
Are there possible downsides to a CPO? Yes. I did you a huge favor here today and brought in a 28-year veteran from a dealership service department to answer this question. Darren Weberg is now a service manager at Longview Auto & Tire. Darren spent 28 years in the service department of a major dealership, finishing his dealership career as a service manager. He's seen the good, bad, and ugly of a dealership CPO program from the inside. Help me welcome Darren Weberg. One of the problems with a CPO is that you have to work with a franchise dealer. You can buy a nice used low mileage car at any dealership, including non-franchise dealers, and get very close to, if not the exact same thing. Secondly, most dealers advertise that they do a good inspection on every car. If you stop someplace and they don't have an inspection process, leave. Good inspections are why you buy from dealerships. Mechanics should inspect every car. CPO inspections are not necessarily any better. CPOs require regular maintenance. Maintenance is not the problem. Where you have to do the maintenance is the problem. Fail to meet CPO requirements and it could void your warranty. Most dealerships want you to have the maintenance done at their dealership or you have to have it done at their dealership. Why? That way you come back and spend more money with them. CPO programs many times include a deductible. Subaru is the only one that I'm aware of that does not have a deductible always ask before signing any paperwork. You have limited choices with CPOs. Dealerships always choose what cars they want to put into the CPO program and it might not be the car you're looking for with the right color, the right options, or any of the above. CPOs don't necessarily save you money. Do your homework. CPOs cost more than good used cars because it costs the dealership to certify them. You can actually spend less money on a good used car and even add your own service plan. Bottom line, dealers make more money on CPOs. Final thought, CPOs for electric cars, like Nissan, they offer different details and different coverages. Always ask about the coverages. If you still have any questions, you can reach me at the contact info on the screen. Thanks, Darren, for those insights. If you have any questions on CPOs for Darren, you can visit longviewautotire.com or email to darren at longviewautotire.com. 28 years in a dealership service department, he has more than a clue about how CPO programs work. Watch for upcoming videos where we ask Darren and others to join us for discussions on what new vehicles to avoid and use cars that are somewhat unreliable. If you want to save money on service plans or extended warranties that you think you don't need, it's good to know which vehicles you can count on and who can tell you better than a mechanic. In summary, if you asked me if I'd buy a CPO car, my answer would be no. I agree with Darren on his observations, but let me also explain. I'm not afraid of cars at all. I've never been burned by a lemon because I always do my homework. I have great friends around me, like Darren, that I can take a car to any time to have inspected before I buy. And yes, you need to develop friends like that if you don't already have them. I talk to local repair shops about their opinions on the best cars to drive. And by the way, I have to tell you this, I got one of the best known families in the car maintenance business, three generations of mechanics with tons of mechanics on the staff to agree to sit down with me and help you car buyers make better car choices. You know, so you don't need all those warranties and stuff the finance office tries to sell you. That's going to be an awesome video. Other reasons I wouldn't be looking for a CPO program is that I like to have better selection in my vehicles. A CPO cuts down my options. And last of all, you're not going to see me stuck with coming back to the dealership every time I need an oil change or general maintenance. Have you ever seen the wait times in those customer service lounges? That alone can be brutal. And then they never give up trying to sell you every time you set foot in the dealership. The upselling can come both from the service department and some of those pesky salesmen who are trained to check the service log every day and go back and bother customers with corny lines like, we have a customer who's looking to buy the kind of car you're driving, you know, to get you back into that car shopping cycle. I don't know about you, but how would I? I'm No, I'm just kidding. I'm not keen on being forced to come back. I like the car I want and I certainly won't let myself be tied down to doing what a dealership wants me to do. But hey, for you, maybe it gives you some peace of mind. A CPO might be exactly what you're looking for. For the right person, it could be perfect. At least now, if you decide you want a CPO, you have a better clue what it's all about. Now, if you don't mind, I have a sidebar question and I'd love to hear your feedback. I wrote a book, Is That the Best You Can Do in 2015? People loved the title and several have suggested that I put the Homework Guy logo on a shirt along with the quote, Is That the Best You Can Do? 
Wouldn't that be an awesome shirt or sweatshirt to wear to the dealership? Give a pesky salesman a clue that he's messing with no ordinary car buyer. Let me know if you'd wear that shirt when you go car shopping. If enough of you like the idea, I'll send free ones out to the people with the best responses. Thanks in advance. If you appreciated the video today, consider giving us a thumbs up and leaving a comment below. Share the video on social media with your friends. And for those of you who wanted to say thanks with a tip, you guys are awesome by the way. I'll leave the PayPal link in the description box down below. You'll see us using those funds to help car buyers with free contract reviews and brokering car deals. Even doing some car lot contests with buyers who didn't know it was their lucky day. And of course, helping a few lucky people with some down payment assistance on their next car. You know you can count on me to be back here addressing your next big concern on my next video about car shopping. I do hope to see some of you in your city in the days ahead. Thanks everyone for coming back. It's time now for me to get back to the best part of my day with my family and friends. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care.